Can AI help me be a better developer educator? Specifically, can Cursor help me knowledgeably talk about Nux? If you don't know, I work as a developer educator for WorkOS. We provide authorization infrastructure for B2B SaaS applications. In fact, Cursor actually uses WorkOS, and if you've logged into Cursor, you've used WorkOS. Now, up to this point, I've been able to work inside of frameworks that I know, like Next, Remix, Astro, etc., React-based frameworks. But this quarter, I'll be teaching a lot more in languages that I really don't understand. Maybe less understand, but I just don't use them all the time. So I thought I'd start off easy and take an integration guide that I already have for Astro and transfer it into Nuxt. With Cursor playing the role of resident Nuxt expert or rubber duck. Okay, so that's all the precursor. Let's get into Cursor. Given our experience in the last video, card above, I've decided to initialize the project before involving Cursor. I think that this will give us a better starting point. Um, asking Cursor to do too much has really only resulted in pain for me. So we're gonna start from something that already includes all of the best practices and up-to-date libraries, etc. So let's grab this code. We'll initialize it with P and PM. We'll just call this Nuxt authkit example and initialize an empty git repo. We'll CD into our project to commit what we have have, and then open the whole thing in cursor using that fancy dancy cursor command that we set up the other day. Now, before we start, there's a few things that I really want to introspect. So I'm gonna open cursor compose, which I haven't used yet, and ask about this project. All right, I have a few questions about this project. It is set up to server render pages and endpoint. Now, I think something that may be valuable for this is to include the Nuxt config file. Let's take a look at these folders. Yeah, I'll add the TS config in the server as well. Second, what is the best practice in Nux to add local.env values? We'll need those. And does Nux offer options for middleware? These are all criteria for going through the authkit in any JS framework. I'll be happy to answer your questions about next projects. We're gonna server side rendering. Based on the provided configuration, this project is set up for server side rendering. Okay, local env values. The best practice for adding local env values in Nuxt is to use the built-in runtime config feature. You can add your environment variables to a .env file in the root of your project and then reference them in Nuxt config TS file. Here's how you can modify the configuration. Okay, and it made those changes just for me, which is very cool. Then you can access these values in your application using use runtime config. Okay, number three, middleware options. Yes, Nux offers several options for middleware, route middleware created in the middleware directory. These run before navigation to a new route. Server middleware add in Nuxt config TS. These run on server side for every request. And plugin middleware created as plugins. These run before the app is mounted. You can implement these based on your specific needs for request response, handling, or authentication. At this point, I have a pending change, it looks like, and I wonder if I need to accept that before clarifying. Uh, I'm gonna go with it. And um, let's see, check this out. This is adding configuration for our environment variables, showing how to differentiate um, secrets from public keys. I like this, so I'm gonna accept this. And then while this isn't an instruction, uh, I do know that we need to add this. So we'll add a dot in, which we'll use momentarily. Okay, so I have a follow up on this and I'm implementing a third party authorization service, AuthKit by WorkOS. Reading your description of the different types of middleware in Nuxt, route middleware seems to fit the bill. Is this correct or is server middleware preferred? Based on your requirement to implement a third-party authorization service like AuthKit, route middleware is indeed a good choice. Here's why. Route middleware runs before navigating to a new route, making it ideal for authentication checks, okay? It also allows you to protect specific routes or groups of routes. I, th I think this uh, specifically may be nice because it sounds like it's integrated into um, a router to some extent. And Astro actually doesn't integrate with the router in middleware, so I had to kind of create my own little mini router to exclude routes. So this sounds like what I want. Uh, it can redirect users if they're not authenticated, perfect. Uh, however, the choice between route middle where and server middleware depends on specific implementation needs. Use route middleware if you need to check authentication status before allowing access to certain pages. 
Yes. Redirect unauthenticated users to a login page. Yes. Perform client side checks or interaction. I don't have an immediate need for that now, but that sounds nice. Consider server middleware if you need to validate the authentication tokens on every request to your server. This I'm not super concerned with. Uh, implement session management that affects all server side options. Now, this is interesting because I may have some server side um, endpoints that I may want to restrict. And so doing that at the request level uh, could be nice. Here we go, uh, handle authentication for API routes. As for right now, I feel comfortable with this direction. Um, but with an eye towards the server middleware. For most AuthKit implementations in a Nux application, route middleware is sufficient and provides a clean way to manage authentication flow. You can create a middleware file like this. Okay, so it creates a middleware file, uh, then apply this middleware to your route as needed. If you find that you need server-side authentication checks for all requests, you can always add server middleware later. Okay, so last time I accepted these changes before asking a follow-up, um, I wanna see how it handles me asking a follow-up and then um, accepting the changes. What is the process for migrating route middleware to server middleware? Okay, this is actually really nice. So up here are all of the files that it has created for me and uh, it still held in memory this auth.ts file, um, even though it created this server middleware as well and updated our Nux config based on my last request. So this is very cool. To migrate the route middleware to server middleware in Nuxt, you'll need to make a few changes. Here's the process, create a new file for your server middleware which lives in this server directory. Update your Nux config to use the server middleware, remove the comments or comment out the route middleware file, middleware auth TS, adjust your authentication logic to work server side. This may involve you using a server side API or library for AuthKit handling cookies. So now this part is confusing to me because I thought that this was already going to be a server route. So let's double, let's clarify that. I may be mistaken, does route middleware not ex get executed server side? Uh, if not, we definitely need to use server middleware because AuthKit will store session data inside cookies. Right to question this, and I apologize for the confusion, let me clarify. Route middleware in Nux can run on both the client and the server depending on the context. However, it's primarily designed for navigation guards and doesn't run on every server request. For handling authentication with cookies, especially when using a service like AuthKit that stores session data in cookies, server middle middleware is indeed the better choice. Your intuition is correct. Since AuthKit stores session data in cookies and you need to validate this on the server for every request, server middleware is the more appropriate solution. It ensures that every request to your Nuxt application goes through the authentication check. Okay, a little bit wordy to answer the question, yes, but very helpful at the same time. All right, so it looks like this is what we'd need. Um, you can keep this setup and remove the route middleware if you're not using it for any client-side specific checks. Great, so we are not. Um, so let's go through this. We need to remove this. So we're gonna reject the middleware auth TS change here. And um, because it's just the file that's in the diff, I need to actually delete that folder. And we want to save this auth TS file that exists in the server content. Now, as for config, we also need to add this to our config so that gets run on every request. So let's commit what we have so far. I'll probably need to, I'm noticing that these buttons are extremely unreliable. So maybe I hit command I to toggle this, command shift I, <laughs> I don't know. Go away, go away. All right, there, there was this tiny little clip in the header that I could kind of just hide it with. I wonder if I can close it now, there we go. All right, now there are a couple funny things in this diff. So this is not a known property, it looks like. Um, we can fix this in AI chat, which will, Give this as context, I believe. So this is a version mismatch. It's no longer used in Nux 3 to resolve this. You should use the Nitro routes config instead. So let's apply that. Yes. Now we're getting another error. Fix with AI. The error suggests that middleware is not a recognized property in routes rules configuration. To resolve this, you should use app middleware instead. Here's a concise fix. Okay, and it looks like it looks like we got there. 
uh, it took a little bit of, to do, but uh, it's there. Now, something that we need to keep in mind is that this is for API and uh, we'll need to probably customize that at some point. In fact, I'm gonna change this right now for dashboard. Okay, we also have a uh, problem here. I think this is a little bit more obvious, but because the experiment is to fix things or to code as little as possible, uh, we'll ask AI to fix it. I don't think it actually got the fix in this case. We need to just have some kind of value here on the right side of this assignment. I um, don't think this is correct. So we're actually gonna have to fix this on our own and just put some kind of assignment in here. I'll say false uh, for now, because that will be the default state before we actually add everything. We'll commit this as add basic env support and server middleware boilerplate. Okay, now let's close this up and get to some of my instructions. So first we wanna create a new app, which we've done. Next, we want to add work OS environment variables. So let's go to our work OS account, sign in and grab those. So we have a work OS client ID and a work OS API key. We also need to generate a password for our cookie password that should be 32 plus characters long. So let's add those to our env file, work OS client ID, work OS API key, our work OS cookie password. We also need a work OS redirect URI, which I assume it probably uh, knows enough for this to be correct, but we'll see. Now I tend to like auth callback, so we'll just make that that little change and save this. Okay, so these live outside of Git, so this instruction is effectively done. Next, we need to install the WorkOS Node SDK. I'm curious if that's something that we can get cursors help with. So I'll just copy this as an instruction and see how Compose handles it. Okay, so I think it largely understood the instruction. Install the WorkOS Node.js SDK and update our server middleware to use it for authentication. This, I'd be surprised if it got right, but we'll see. Now it didn't attempt to install the package. So that is something that we'll have to do, it looks like. I do find myself having a really hard time with this window context right here. Uh, so let's run that. And actually, so I just noticed something. It told us to NPM install, but we're actually using PNPM. Okay, we should see that updated in our package JSON. And because we installed it ourselves we know that that's the latest version okay now let's update the server middleware to use work os for authentication now at the point that it did this it wouldn't have had the the library so it wouldn't know any of the types or anything like that so it's probably just going off information that was available on the internet at some point uh check for the work os session token in the cookies if there's no token okay so this this looks largely correct in terms of high level instructions. Um, let's update our next Nux config to include the WorkOS environment variables. Awesome, so that part I did forget to do. Um, no framework that I use has this type of setup. These changes set up the basic structure for using WorkOS AuthKit in our next app, Nuxt application. Uh, you'll need to implement the login flow and callback handling separately, typically in your API. It's nice that it's handing me off to what the next step is. So let's see what it did in AuthTF. This looks close, but the instructions have been updated since that was last true. Fine event handler. So this is an, in our middleware. Looks like it's going to get cookies and from those cookies, try to parse out the cookie that we need. Now, I know that some of the integrations require this to be named a specific way. Um, I think that might just be for integrations, not the SDK as a whole though. Now I'm not super confident in the direction that it's taking us right now. So I'm gonna reject it for the time being and go step by step. I'm afraid that it's inserting a, a little bit too much at one time for me to uh, accurately follow along with. So my next step is to ensure that we're rendering using a, a hybrid or server strategy, which I know we are, we started with that check. So next we want to create a sign in endpoint route, which this should be pretty simple. Create a new sign in server side endpoint. Pretty straightforward. Let's see what we get. Certainly, let's create a new server side endpoint for this sign in. We'll create this with the server API directory to handle the sign in process using WorkOS. This endpoint does the following it imports necessary functions and the WorkOS SDK. It uses the define event handler to create a server side endpoint. It retrieves the runtime configuration using use runtime config. It initializes the work OS client with, so it, it's nice that it's, I mean, it kind of feels like it's overstepping based on the instruction that I gave it, but I understand how it got there given the context of what we're trying to do. 
what I've rejected, etc. So this is, this feels pretty good. So it's doing a bunch of stuff for us. I might come back to these instructions if I can't uh, make reasonable sense of the code. It directs the user to the work OS authorization URL to use the endpoint. Make sure your front end has a way to navigate to API sign in button. When a user hits this endpoint, they'll be redirected to, okay, cool, perfect. I wanna see then how much was changed for me. It looks like it just added this um, sign in endpoint, which is cool. Let's accept that. And we'll add a button to the sign in route on the index page, just so we know that we got there. All right, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of words, but index view, uh, we're not seeing a diff here. Suggested code, diff view. Okay, cool, perfect. Um, all of this is fairly foreign to me. I can make a little bit of sense um, from it, but this is extremely curious and I, I have to ask a question about it. Is there a reason that we're not using a simple link is it because I said button instead of link or anchor? <laughs> You're absolutely right. And I apologize for the oversight using a simple link. Anchor tag is indeed a better approach for this scenario. Yeah, I made an assumption based on the word button without considering the simple, but yeah. So that was 100% my fault for calling it kind of the colloquial term button um, when really we need um, a link or an anchor tag. So let's uh, see if that fixed it. Yes, that looks much more like I was hoping to see. It's having questions about styling. Eh? Uh, you can style the anchor tag to look a little bit more like a button if your preference. Okay, it's nice that it's making this assumption that I want it styled like a button. Okay, the styles would be nice. Please add those as well. All right, how's it look? Yep, we got those styles. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, let's accept that. And I think that's it for this step. Okay, let's run a server real quick and see if this matches our expectation. Okay, so right off the bat, we're having a little bit of a problem. We're being automatically redirected to login. Um, when I want to see the homepage first. So let's diagnose that real quick. This is coming from our auth handler. So let's ask about that. Running the app, I'm automatically redirected to the login page. I don't want that. I wanna see the homepage and then click the button to navigate to the sign in route. I'm curious if there's some config because I really don't need it to apologize to me every time. I don't care about that. I just want it to do what I'm asking it to do. The issue is in server middleware auth. Yes, which we identified. identified. It's currently redirecting all authentication requests to the login page, which is not the behavior you want. Here's how we can update the file. So let's open that. It does seem like it's overstepping quite a bit uh, with a lot of assumptions, but uh, I'm gonna maybe give it the benefit of the, the, the doubt and just let it do what it wants to do and uh, correct it later. So let's apply all. I'm gonna take, take my hands off the wheel and uh, see how it goes. My biggest thing is, did it, did it work? Yes, okay, so uh, we get this page. Um, there's some cool transitions, but I don't see the sign in button. Let's open our index.view and make sure that that's there. Yeah, so we should see welcome to our app and uh, sign in with AuthKit. And I don't know about you, but I am not seeing that. Now, I don't know if it's because we're getting this next route welcome or if there's some kind of routing configuration beyond this. So we'll just ask, why am I why am I not seeing the index view file when navigating to the local host? There could be a few reasons. Let's troubleshoot. So file location, ensure the index view file is in the current location in your Nux 3 project. It should be in the pages directory at the root level, which uh, we do see. Next configuration. If your Nux config TS file is set up to use the pages directory by default, Nux 3 uses auto imports for pages, but it's worth verifying. So as we can temporarily count out the server middleware, uh, simplify your index view to rule out any other components, verify that your product structure looks like this. Um, okay, so um, accept all for right now, which will comment out the server middleware and we'll restart. Hopefully seeing our button, which we do not. Okay, so we're not seeing what we wanna see uh, here and we are getting an error. I wonder if this is a result of some of that extraneously uh, added code that we have in, I think it's auth. TS, uh, where we're instantiating this work OS object. Now let's try to fix it and see what happens. I think, yeah, I was gonna say, I think that the problem is, is that it's actually the default export that we need to be grabbing. Now this isn't necessarily my preference for uh, writing it out, but let's accept it and see what happens. <laughs> now, this is funny too. It's uh, now it's complaining about the code that it suggested and it looks like it's just gonna send us back. Now this, I think that we just need to um, pull it off. I think it's a 
named export, but I wonder how we could communicate that information to the AI. Is it possible to add the type definitions as context here? It doesn't look like it, but maybe we can open that up and copy it. Yep, add to chat here. Uh, this is the type of file for the WorkOS node SDK. Does this help? Yes, type definition files provide valuable information. Based on this, we need to adjust the import and initialization slightly. Here's the corrected version. Yes, so it is a named export, uh, which it wasn't getting, and uh, we want to accept those changes. Now that resolves, should uh, resolve the error that we're seeing. Okay, so if we restart, that should resolve the error theoretically, but doesn't necessarily get us to the place that we want. Oh wait, okay, 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 this is promising. So we resolved the error that allowed us to get to the homepage maybe. So remove the welcome page by replacing Nuxt. Now I'm just gonna copy this because I am not the person doing this work. Um, cursor is, so let's open up Compose again and paste this in as a as an instruction. It keeps passing these in as context, which I don't think we need. All right, I see the issue now. It seems that you have a default app view file in your project root that's overriding. So I guess we need to delete that or change it. So create it, update it app view, close these saved suggestions that we had and get to the app view file and accept that change. Now it says that we should see the change and yes, we do, perfect, yes, okay. So welcome to our app, this is the index page. Now, if it is the index page, it should have our button. <laughs> Good Lord. Now it looks like it deleted our button uh, for unknown reasons. So let's go back <laughs> and uh, use our index.view as context. Yo, what happened with the uh, sign in with AuthKit link? <laughs> I apologize for the oversight. You're absolutely right. The sign in link is missing. Okay, uh, accept that. Hey, here we go. Now, um, I haven't taken a look at the, the route that was created, but it should direct us. Yes, API sign in and the page isn't working, which is, uh, I think, to be expected because at this point, we just wanna make sure that there is a sign-in route. Of course, this code is actually looking remarkably good. Let's see if we can fix this with AI. There suggests that WorkOS is not a constructor function. Man, this problem again. Yes, okay, so the sign-in hasn't been updated. I'm wondering if it can recall the context. Do you remember how we solved this with auth.ts given the type definitions I shared? For it to remind us about the solution we use for auth.ts given the context, let's apply this. Except this is uh, incorrect. <laughs> so let's find those again. Where were they? Uh, wish that there was, an, and I could be missing it. I wish that there was an easier way to share uh, like type definitions, add a chat. Nope, this was the type file, which we get the right solution for. Okay, now with that fixed, this is starting to look pretty good and we should see um, a redirect to the authorization URL, assuming that nothing else is incorrect. So let's go back, click our sign in with authkit URL and see what we got wrong. Redirect URI invalid. Okay, cool, we can fix that. Let's open up chat just on this file. I'm getting a redirect URI invalid error. Uh, know why this might be happening and for this, I'm also going to include as context the environment variables and our, our Nux config. Oh, the redirect URI error is likely caused by mismatch between the redirect URI you've set in WorkOS dashboard and the one you're using in the application. This is absolutely true. I had not updated it to um, to use the localhost uh, port 3000 yet. So let's do that. Go to our redirects and Add. Okay, so uh, we have a callback, but an auth callback uh, for port 3000. So let's add that. And also while we're here, change this to 3000. Now let's try that again without any additional changes to our app. And hey, we did it. All right, so this is uh, about as much time as I wanted to spend on this experiment today. I would like to get through the whole list of these things, but as you can see, uh, there's quite a bit. We've covered about this much in the time we've spent today. All right, so I would say my experience today was generally positive. I was able to not touch any code. There were uh, some hairy moments where things were added or didn't understand the library in a way that I would like to. Um, it is, Surprisingly difficult to add type definitions. Um, I had to actually go into the NPM package 
and then copy those and send those to the chat. So I don't know if there's, if I'm doing something wrong there, uh, if there's an easier way to send those definitions. But once the uh, definitions were shared, um, it made quick work of a solution. So to say, I am impressed coming from no experience with the Nuxt ecosystem. I've already learned uh, quite a few conventions around environment variables, route middleware versus server middleware. Um, there's a lot of things that I was able to pick up by, by building instead of by reading documentation and uh, actually have something to show for it. So yeah, we've only completed the first part of it, but I feel confident, I feel good about the direction of this thing. Uh, if you wanna see us continue on in this direction and learn more about the uh, next framework using cursor, uh, you know, do the like subscribe, like thing and tell YouTube that you wanna see more of these um, or don't. I'm fantastic. See you in the next one. Bye.